What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of dark ascension a lot of really fun stuff in this set Unfortunately, nothing of too crazy high value that I know of at least uh, but hopefully we still get something awesome uh, Of course, we're gonna look at this from a draft perspective So we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our uh, first round draft pick would be if we were actually drafting this set uh, I did not draft during this time, so I don't necessarily know what the best cards are, but uh, we'll do the best we can. So our first one here is Spiteful Shadows. It's an enchant creature for one and a black. Uh, when it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage, that much damage excuse me, to its controller. Uh, I don't really like a card like this. Uh, enchant creatures, while this one is not focused on something like your creature, uh, it still is just not really the biggest threat. Uh, I'd rather do something like play a creature or something like that that can actually deal some damage right away to an opponent and more reliably. Uh, and so for that reason, not the biggest fan of this. Uh, Erdwall Ripper is a 2-1 with haste uh, for 1 and 2 red. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Uh, I feel like this is actually a pretty decent 3 drop. Um, right away, you're going to be able to swing in and hopefully... Uh, if if it's not blocked uh, actually get a 1-1 one, one counter right away, which makes it a 3-2 three, for three uh, And ideally it's gonna stick around and be able to kind of go crazy Obviously removal is gonna be I mean this is prime target for removal 100% But uh, I do think it's a pretty good threat uh, at three and so for that reason uh, I do like this especially better than our first card uh, black cat uh, is a 1-1 one, one for one and a black uh, when it dies target opponent discards a card at random uh, I don't really like this card. Uh, I like the fact that the discard is at random uh, I feel like that actually makes it not terrible uh, Though still not good uh, for two mana. You're still just getting a 1-1 one, one, uh, That is gonna block and die. You're expecting this to die Ideally you want to be a little more proactive. So for that reason not super interested uh, Break of Day is an instant for one and a white. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until em end of turn. This also has Fateful Hour, which is a, a, a set specific mechanic. So if you have five or less life, those creatures are also indestructible until end of turn. These are really classic style cards. We've seen them in the form of uh, Trumpet Blast or Inspired Charge, things like that, where they're really, really good payoffs for go wide strategies. So if you've got a lot of tokens or a lot of cheap creatures, something like this is going to be a really prime card for your deck because it's going to be a really efficient way to end the game quickly. Uh, you just attack with everything, buff them all at once, and then hopefully get in just, just enough damage to kind of take your opponent out or at least clear the board on their side and put yourself in a really good winning position. Uh, this also has the bonus, obviously, with Fateful Hour, and it's actually only two mana, which uh, is pretty cheap, honestly, for an ability like this. Uh, that being said, I wouldn't take this first. I would much rather have like the token generators, things like that, a little bit before I would take a card like this. Uh, I want this card in that deck, certainly, but I don't know if I'm necessarily in that deck right away. Uh, and so for that reason, I wouldn't take this early. Uh, Hunger of the Howl Pack uh, is an instant for one green. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature, and then this also has Morbid, another set-specific mechanic. Put three 1-1 one, one counters on it if a creature died this turn. Uh, Morbid was a really interesting mechanic. It's one that you can really swing in your favor with combat and things like that. Uh, three 1-1 one, one counters is really good for one mana. Uh, even just one, using this as a combat trick is great. I feel like this is a pretty premium combat trick. Uh, it is instant speed, so you can use it as such. Plus, it's counters, not just a, a end of turn buff or something like that. Uh, that's very, very powerful. I think I would still rather have the Ripper over this, but this is definitely a good aggressive card. <laughs> Uh, Falcon Wrath Torturer is a 2-1 for 2 and a black. You can sacrifice a creature and it gains flying until the end of the turn. If the sacrifice creature was a human, you put a plus one plus one counter on the Falcon Wrath Tutor. Uh, Torturer, excuse me, not Tutor. Uh, this is a really uh, uh, card that focuses a lot on the aristocrat strategy, uh, which is to kind of build up a lot of vampires, humans, sack them, do some cool stuff with it, uh, get a lot of synergy that way. Obviously, the human synergy in this is really interesting. Uh, I I feel like this is a pretty good card. I don't know that it's better than the Ripper. Uh, I feel like I'd rather have a few more humans before I take this, especially because it's a common. I feel like it's gonna be uh, a card that I would see a little bit more of even if I waited later in the pack or even just in another Dark Ascension pack, right? So uh, I feel like I wouldn't take this early, but it's really, really a solid three drop in that deck. Uh, I think the Ripper is a little bit better just on its own, which is why I would take this, uh, take the Ripper over this. Uh, Heavy Maddock is a equipment uh, for three mana, and it 
basically gives the the equipped creature plus one plus one uh, if the equi equipped creature is a human it gets an additional plus one plus one and then the equip cost is two again we're seeing a lot of that humans uh synergy in this set uh that was a big uh vampires a lot of tribal stuff uh this card is just kind of a filler card in my mind i feel like if you're in humans it's not a bad card uh, if you're not in humans or you maybe just have one or two, it's still okay. It's not great. It's not super efficient, but it is an artifact that sticks around. You can give it to other creatures even if that creature dies, uh, which makes it a step above something like an enchant creature, which might do the same thing. Uh, and so I do like this card. It fits into any deck, but it's not that impressive. I would definitely wait till later in the pack to pick it. Uh, Young Wolf is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. It does have Undying, so when it dies, if it had no plus 1, plus 1 counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. I really like this card. This is a really solid 1-drop. Uh, being able to bring it back right away if it does die uh, as a 2-2 two -two is really, really good. We have actually seen this card in uh, certain popper decks and things like that just because it is so good as a 1-drop. Uh, again, I feel like the Ripper is a bit better. It's a bit more aggressive, uh, but this being able to come back is really, really key. So I could kind of go either way, but I would probably pick the Ripper over this. Uh, Evolving Wilds is a very classic land. Uh, you can tap it, sacrifice it, and search your deck for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your deck. Uh, this is a really just a card that we've seen everywhere. Terramorphic Expanse is essentially the same thing. Uh, I really like it if you're in multicolored decks, which generally speaking in draft, you end up in maybe two colors, sometimes three, depending on the set, uh, maybe even more than that. But a card like Evolving Wilds is great because it does fix you uh, for the mana that you might need. So I don't take these early, but again, if I'm in a multicolor deck and I happen to see this, especially if there's no other picks in the pack, this is a really safe pick. It's always going to be good if you're in a multicolor deck. So for that reason, it's good. Still would rather have a little more direction with the Ripper first. Uh, Tower Geist is a 2-2 for 3 and a blue. It does have flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. This is very much my kind of card. It digs you a little bit into your deck. It's a 2-2 flyer, so hopefully it's going to get in for a little bit of damage uh, or at least be able to block in the air, which is good. Uh, it does also have that graveyard synergy, being able to dump something into your graveyard. There will be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are benefits to doing stuff like that in this set. Uh, so I like this more than the Ripper for sure. Uh, this is definitely just a really solid card. Uh, Faith Shield is an instant for one white. Target permanent you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. This also has Fateful Hour, so if you have five or less life, instead uh, you and each permanent you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn, so pretty powerful on that end uh, for only white, one white mana, but uh, I really don't like this card. It's very much a save yourself, save your creature kind of spell. I'd rather just be able to play better creatures, uh, and so to me, this is just not worth it. It's a little bit of a trap for, I think, newer players. Uh, Chill of Foreboding is a sorcery for two and a blue. Uh, each player puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This also has flashback for seven and a blue. That's a pretty big flashback cost. Uh, this, again, though, showing off that Tower Geist mechanic where you can dump stuff in your graveyard. And then with flashback, you can actually play it even if it is already there. So uh, a little bit of synergy uh, connection there. But... I don't really like this card. While mill strategies actually are pretty solid uh, in a lot of uh, limited decks just because you have less cards to have to get through. I mean, it's only a 40 card deck, so ideally you'll be able to get through that uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I don't like that uh, this is really, really expensive on the flashback cost and it hits both of you. Uh, I do think you have to be in the flashback deck to make this card good. Uh, otherwise, I don't really know that there's a dedicated mill deck in this set. I might be wrong on that, so please correct me in the comments if I am. Uh, but I don't believe there is, and so for that reason, I'm not super excited by this. Uh, and then our rare is Call to the Kindred. It is an enchantment aura for three and a blue. It's an enchant creature. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may look at the top five cards of your library. Uh, if you do, you may put a creature card that shares a creature type with the enchanted creature from among them onto the battlefield. Then you put the rest of those cards on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, this definitely is a build around card. Uh, obviously, build arounds are a little bit tricky and limited because you're, sub you're subject to whatever you get past. So uh, if you have this card and you really want to go into that humans kind of strategy, great, but if you don't get humans, you just can't. So that's a little bit frustrating. For that reason, I don't know if this is a first pick uh, kind of card or if this is 
uh, one of those cards that probably just shouldn't be played. Uh, I think it could kind of go either way, though. For someone like me who hasn't played much of this set, I actually kind of would want to try this. Uh, so again, I'm a little new to Dark Ascension just in terms of not having drafted it a lot. Uh, and so for that reason, I think it would be fun to try and build around this. I don't necessarily think that's the right call though. Uh, we of course do have a flip card here and it's actually a pretty good one. So Elbrus the Binding Blade, uh, it's a legendary artifact equipment. It does cost seven mana, but the equipped creature gets plus one plus zero. When it deals combat damage to a player, you unattach uh, Elbrus and then transform it. The equip cost, of course, only being one, and you transform it into Weathengar Unbound. It's a 13-13 uh, flying intimidate trample. Uh, whenever a player loses the game, put 13 one one counters uh, on the Unbound. This is a really powerful card, obviously. I would probably pick that over everything else just because it's so ridiculous. Uh, I do think, uh, excluding this card, I could kind of either see Towergeist or Call to the Kindred. Uh, again, much more of a build around card, much more of a safe pick in Towergeist. Uh, so it's really dependent on whatever you decide to do. Uh, I would probably go Call to the Kindred for fun, but that's definitely my pick. So uh, if you agree, disagree, if you would like the video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, and as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.